Hi, it's Mr. Mazurkowitz, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at plant tissues. Now, before we can get started, it's important that you have a good understanding as far as what is meant by the term tissue. So if you recall, all living things on this planet are made out of one or more cells. But in the case of things that are multicellular, made out of many cells, we start seeing that cells come together to start working together for a common function. And what we call this is a tissue. So here's a picture of a human body, and our bodies are made out of various types of tissues. So for example, we have a type of tissue called muscular tissue, and that makes up our muscles so they work together to allow us to move. Uh, we also have nervous tissue which is going to make up our nervous system so to allow signals to be sent throughout the body. Well just like humans have various types of tissues, plants also have different tissues that we're going to cover that are just groups of cells working together for a common function so that the plant can survive. So here's a picture of a sequoia tree and sequoia trees are massive. They can get to be hundreds and hundreds of feet high but they still need to be able to survive. They need to be able to transport things around and be able to carry out life functions and it's all thanks to cells working together, uh, forming these things called tissues. So our essential question is going to be, well, what are the main types of plant tissues? We're going to cover four total in this video, and then also discuss what are their functions. So it's important not just to be able to identify them, but to know exactly what are they doing for the plant. So we're going to start with our first tissue here, and that is going to be dermal tissue. Now, if you've ever seen the root of this word before, derm, you might have seen this. Maybe you go to the dermatologist, or you know of you, that you have epidermis you know that this is your skin. So just like we have a dermal tissue or an epidermis, plants also have dermal tissue covering the outside of the plant. And it's exactly the, for the same function that we have it. It's to be a protective layer of cells separating the inside of the plant from the outside. So this is found throughout the plant. It's found in the roots, the stems, the leaves, and it's again just going to be a layer of cells all working together to protect the inside of the plant. So here's a cross section of a leaf and you might have seen a, a cross section of a leaf before and we notice that it has a single layer of cells known as the epidermis. The epidermis is a type of dermal tissue and again it's protecting the inside of that leaf from the outside environment. This is where we're going to find things like the stomata uh, surrounded by two guard cells. That's inside the epidermis. Uh, what also might be formed by the dermal tissue is a um, outer layer known as the cuticle which is going to help prevent water loss. So overall the epidermis or the dermal tissue is going to be that protective layer. It's going to protect the whole plant Plant. It's found throughout the entire plant and it also is going to prevent water loss. After that, once we go inside the roots, the stems, the leaves is where we're going to find our next type of tissue, which is vascular tissue. Now, again, you might have seen this word before if you know anything about uh, human anatomy, like our cardiovascular system. What do we use our cardiovascular system for? Well, that's going to be your heart, but more importantly, your veins and your arteries. This is how we transport our nutrients, oxygen, the blood throughout our body. It'll travel through our veins and arteries. Well, plants also have a network of vascular tissue cells that are going to be aiding in the transport of materials. So things like water, sugars, minerals, nutrients. This is how we're going to transport things throughout that plant. So anytime that we need to transport something, it's got to take the vascular tissue. Now there are primarily two types, or there are two types of vascular tissue. One is going to be shown in this diagram here. So if you imagine that this diagram is going to be the inside of the stem here, there's going to be two types of tissue. The first one is going to be something that we call the xylem, and that's noted by these number ones here. Xylem is going to be a type of vascular tissue that transports water and the stuff dissolved in that water throughout the plant. And the key thing about xylem is that it only moves in one direction. It's going to transport water up. Xylem can only transport things in the up direction from the roots, through the stems, and then to the leaves. And it's the force of transpiration. When water evaporates out, it's going to pull the rest of that water behind it, moving in that direction. So the xylem is, again, going to be vascular tissue transporting water and minerals from the roots to the leaves. Well, then what else? What about the other things that the plant might need to transport? For example, the sugar is made from photosynthesis. Well, that's not going to be able to transport through the xylem. That's going to take another type of vascular tissue known as phloem. So phloem is going to transport sugars made from photosynthesis from the leaves where they're made, and then that's going to be transported throughout the plant, up and down. So that's a key thing about phloem, which is noted by the number two here in this diagram. So the thing about phloem is that we can move not only things down, but we can also move those sugars up. So we get bilateral movement up and down throughout the plant. So again, to compare and contrast xylem and phloem, what do they have in common? Well, they're both types of vascular tissues transporting things throughout the plant, but how are they different? Xylem is just water one direction up. Phloem is going to be food. That's how I remember it, phloem food. The sugar is made from photosynthesis, and that's going to be able to move in both up and down directions. Now, 
we've covered the outer part of the plant, the um, dermal tissue. We've talked about the vascular tissue, but what about the rest of the leaves, the roots, the stems? What about all the rest of that tissue? Well, that is something that we call the ground tissue. The ground tissue, the simplest way to think about it is it's the remainder of the plant. If it's not dermal, if it's not vascular tissue, then it's going to be ground tissue. And that's pretty much where all the magic happens. So regardless of what part of the plant we're talking about, the root, the stem, the leaf, the ground tissue is going to be pretty much where everything is carried out, the major functions for the plant. So for example, in this leaf, here's the epidermal tissue at the um, top and the bottom. But what's going on inside here? This would be the ground tissue, and this is going to be where photosynthesis is taking place. So in leaves, the ground tissue is the main location of photosynthesis. Here is a picture of the inside of a stem. So again, here is our epidermal layer here. So this would be the protective layer of cells, um, the dermal tissue. Each one of these sort of uh, structures here, this is going to be your vascular tissue, the xylem and phloem transporting things up and down throughout the plant. But what is the rest of this called throughout the stem? That's going to be your ground tissue. So if it was the stem, that's going to be where we're going to have a lot of support, cells with thick cell, uh, excuse me, cell walls to give support to that stem. If it's the root, this is where a lot of the sugars and water are going to be stored. So this is again going to be carrying out the major um, functions. If you eat a plant, let's say you eat a piece of celery or you eat a carrot or potato, which part are you really eating to get all that nutrient and water from? it's really the ground tissue. So we've now talked about the three major types of plant tissues. We have dermal tissue, which is providing protection for the plant. We have the vascular tissue, which is transporting materials throughout the plant. And then finally, the ground tissue, which was going to do everything else, photosynthesis in the leaves or storage of food and water in the roots or provide structure for the plant in the stem. But what about growth? We haven't talked about how plants grow. And that is going to be thanks to a type of tissue that we call meristematic tissue. Meristem cells are going to be cells that have really one job, and that is to just divide or do mitosis. And as they divide and produce more cells, the plant will get larger and larger. So think about this scenario for a second. If you were to one day decide to go to a young tree and carve your initials into that tree, and let's say you carve it five feet off the ground, and then you decide to come back to that same tree, uh, let's say 50 years later, where will those initials be? Will they still be five feet from the ground or will they be higher up in the tree? And the answer to that question is they're still going to be in the same exact spot, only five feet from the ground. And the reason for that is because when plants grow, they actually only grow from the tips. They grow from the tips of the, uh, the stem as well as the tips of the roots. And that is thanks to a type of meristem cell that we call apical meristem. Apical meristem cells are going to be cells specifically found at the tips of roots and uh, stems, so at the tips here and the tips here, and they are responsible for a type of growth that we call primary growth. So growth, in other words, that means getting taller as well as deeper into the ground. So as these cells divide, uh, the, cell is, uh, the plant is going to get taller and deeper into the ground. So here's a picture of a root, and if you know the anatomy of a root, you know that roots are going to have a protective cap that we call the root cap. So this is just dead cells, but what do we call these cells over here? These are going to be your apical meristems, the cells that are really doing mitosis. And as they divide, that root grows down. And again, we're going to find similar cells at the tip of the stem where they divide, causing that plant to get higher and higher up. Now, as that plant is getting higher and taller, it also needs to grow this way, a type of growth that we now call secondary growth. Now, those aren't due to apical meristem. That's going to be due to another type of meristem cells that we call Cambium. So cambium are going to be meristem cells that cause that secondary growth. In other words, wider and wider found in the roots and the stems of plants. Now, there are really two types of cambium. So just stick with me here. There is what is called vascular cambium. And this is going to be the type of cells that produce new vascular tissues. So remember, we said that's things like xylem and phloem. So if we're to look inside, let's say, the uh, stem of a plant here, this cross section. Our vascular tissue is going to be found right here. So these would be stem cells or meristem cells that are dividing. Some of the cells are going to divide and push out this way. That's going to produce more phloem, so to transport the sugars throughout the plant. And then we'll have some that are dividing this way. That's going to produce new xylem, so cells that are going to be able to transport water up from the roots to the leaves. So as we do this, that's going to push and make our, uh, let's say, stem or the root thicker and thicker and thicker, a type of secondary growth. Now, as that gets wider and wider, we're now going to have more circumference around. So we're going to also need to replace the outer part, which we call the cork. So we're going to have another type of cambium, which is called the cork cambium. And this produces cork, the outermost part of the bark, where the I uh, think of it as like the trunk of the tree has that woody part. That's going to be your um, vascular cambium, or excuse me, your cork cambium producing that. So same thing, we're going to have a layer of cells here, the cork cambium, and they're going to be dividing, providing more of that cork, that protective layer around the stem of the plant. Both of these together, though, both of these types of cambium are going to cause that secondary kind of growth. 
So that's our final type of tissue. At this point, we've talked about the four major types of tissues found in plants. We have your dermal, we have your vascular, we have your ground, and then fourth, but certainly not least, we have your meristematic tissue. And at this point, you should be able to not only identify them, but know what is their function, what purpose do they serve for the plant. If you can do that, you could really name all the different types, you're in good shape. If not, feel free to go back and rewatch any part that you need. Thank you guys so much for watching.